second order homogeneous differential equations. First of all, what do they look like? Well, they look like this. A, d squared y by dx squared plus b, dy by dx plus cy equals zero, where a, b and c are constants. First of all, we need to write this in standard form for the derivation. Uh, and that simply means that the uh, coefficient of the d squared y by dx squared term must be 1. So we can achieve that by simply dividing throughout by a, as you can see I have done here. And what we now need to do is consider what is known as the auxiliary equation. And that is simply a quadratic that has the same coefficients um, in the way that you see inside this green box. Now we're going to let the solutions to the auxiliary equation be m1 and m2 and that means that I could write the following down. Yeah. Um, okay and if I just expand that out I end up with this line right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is just compare the coefficients from the uh, first expression the last expression and you should see that I can claim that b over a is equal to minus m1 plus m2 and c over a is equal to m1 m2. You may have met this before. Um, it forms a, a little area of maths um, which can be called Vieta's formulae. Maybe worth a little bit of research. Right, so if I just write down our uh, differential equation now in standard form, I'm going to say that that can be written like this by substituting b over a uh, with these roots from the auxiliary equation. I'm just going to do a little bit of expanding here. So I get this line. Now it gets quite clever. I'm going to rewrite what you see above like this. Now just have a think. Um, for the first two terms, uh, please don't think I've factorised a d by dx out here. That's not what's happened mathematically. What I'm saying is that those first two terms could be written as the derivative with respect to x, d by dx of dy by dx minus m1y. And if you just differentiate that out, you'll see that that is indeed the case. I would get d squared y by dx squared minus m1 times by, and the derivative of y with respect to x, of course, it's an implicit derivative, and we'll just get dy by dx. Uh, for the last two terms, I have factorised, and I've simply pulled a factor of m2 out. Next, I'm going to say let z equal dy by dx minus m1y. And so I can now write the previous equation in this form right here. In other words... I can now write um, the differential equation as dz by dx minus m2z equals zero. Let me just summarise what we've got then. We've got this result, and we also had that z was equal to dy by dx minus m1y. So we can solve one directly. In fact, if we rearrange uh, and separate the variables, it's a, a very, very easy differential equation to solve indeed. And we're just going to end up with this, um, which is the same as this. And I'm going to take z then just to be equal to... Uh, oh, let me just mention one thing here. So the modulus of z was equal to e to the m2x plus c. And um, you'll notice that um, I've then rewritten this as z equals lambda e uh, to the power of m2x. If you are wondering what's happening here, let me just try and write one more line on if it'll let me do this. From this line right here, uh, what I've actually done is I have just said that that's the same as e m2x times by e to the c, and then I've just called this e to the c lambda, hence I get this result right here. OK, let's continue. Uh, from 2, what I can now do is just uh, write it the other way around, so dy by dx minus m1y, uh, and I can now say that that is equal to z, which is lambda e uh, to the power of m2x, as you can see right here. OK, well, this is another fairly uh, easy differential equation to solve. We'll just use an integrating factor 
and of course the integrating factor here uh, is just going to be uh, I, I of x is equal to e to the power of minus the integral of m1 dx. So I can find that straight away. I hope that just fits on the screen. Yep, um, I of x is equal to e to the power of minus m1x. Okay, so um, multiplying throughout by that integrating factor would look like this. And I don't need to do much with the left-hand side, of course, because it's an integrating factor, and therefore I know that it collapses using the product rule directly, so that I can write this line down right here. Okay, so let me just write that again. Um, and now I can proceed onwards uh, and say, first of all, let's have a, a look at the case where m1 is not equal to m2. In other words, the roots of the auxiliary equation are distinct. So I can integrate each side with respect to x directly, um, and hopefully you would agree that I would get this. I can see one little mistake in my working. Allow me just to correct that. The bracket here is in the wrong place. Apologies. Let me just take care of that. There we go. That's better. Um, OK. And then plus some constant of integration I've just called a capital A. Um, continuing with the processing, and all I've done on this line is um, I've just expanded out this power so that you can see that I can write it like this, and I'm now just going to multiply each side by e to the m1x. Of course, that will cancel it from the left-hand side, and in fact, what I'm going to be left with is this. Okay, well, again, you should be able to see that these are going to cancel out. So I end up with this line. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to say, well, at the end of the day, lambda divided by m2 minus m1 is just a constant. So I'm going to say, let b equal lambda over m2 minus m1. And that takes me to this stage right here. So we now know what the uh, solution to a second order homogeneous differential equation will look like if the roots of the auxiliary equation are distinct. Now bear in mind here that um, I haven't made any claim about m1 and m2 being real roots, and in fact if they're imaginary roots or complex roots, that will work uh, just as well. In fact, if they're imaginary or complex, you hopefully think, hang on a minute, this looks a little bit uh, like Euler's form, and indeed so, and there's something more that you can then do with this. But we'll meet that a little later on. Right, let me just write this line down again and now consider the case 2 where m1 equals m2. In other words, when we've got repeated roots. And this, in fact, is a little easier because, of course, on the right-hand side now, I'm just going to get m1 minus m1. In other words, my differential equation is quite simply this. OK, so, um, right, well, let's just integrate. And if I uh, integrate each side with respect to x, I'll get this. This time I've called the constant plus b. Um, and I end up with this line right here just by multiplying each side by e to the uh, power of m1x. Uh, I'm just going to make one little change here. I'm just going to say let a equal lambda. Uh, because what you'll normally see written in the textbook is the solution of a second order homogeneous differential equation where the roots of the auxiliary equation are equal, i.e. a re repeated root, is written like this. So, in summary, what do you actually have to do when solving a problem? Well, if you're given a d squared y by dx squared plus b dy by dx plus c of y equals zero, uh, the first thing to realise is you actually don't, when you're solving them, need to write this in standard form. All you need to do is solve the auxiliary equation am squared plus bm plus c equals zero, uh, and let's say it has roots m1 and m2. If m1 doesn't equal m2, then the general solution is y equals a e to the power of m1x plus b e to the power of m2x. I'll put a little green asterisk there, you'll see why in a second. And if m1 equals m2, then the general solution is y equals e to the m1x, parenthesis, ax plus b. I put the little asterisk there because if m1 and m2 are complex or imaginary, 
uh, then the general solution can be written in terms of a harmonic function. Harmonic function, of course, is just y equals a sine kx plus b cos kx, as you've done in pure maths. Uh, this can be achieved by simply considering Euler's form of a complex number, and that will be in the next video. Thank you.